of five minutes. The referee is Mr. Niels Bursken. So some very similar stats you can see there on the tail of the tape, similar height, almost identical reach, and only a couple of years between them. This would be interesting. Of course, Stefan, you probably rarely faced anyone of the same build of you. Very rarely. Volkov comes to mind. But yeah, you still he's have only 6'11", though. Only 6'11". <laughs> Fight! So we have three rounds of five minutes here. Gatcha in the full orange, and we have DeFranco in the gray and orange trunks. You'll notice Gatcha's style and uh, his stance just a little more bladed than a lot of guys, a little more bladed with the, with the front hip, more of a taekwondo or karate kind of yep. influence. Always interesting when someone has a stance like that. Well, he's uh, actually a third degree black belt at uh, Taekwondo and was uh, world champion in 2014. There we yes. go. So I was talking to Donovan about this earlier tonight. I grew up a, a Taekwondo player and Donovan grew up a boxer. And when we both started doing MMA, people made us box like MMA boxing or kickbox like MMA kickboxing. Today, you'd never do that. If you have a young kid with a, with a lifetime of experience in something, you'll build on that instead of trying to change it. No, 100%, I agree. You see that more and more the last couple of years that people really stick to that ta Taekwondo or karate background more and more. It was almost like like before, like Lyoto Machida. Yeah. People were like, no, nah, that doesn't work for MMA. Yes, it does work for yeah. MMA. <laughs> then Stephen Thompson comes along and they're like, well, that doesn't work. And yes, it does work, right? In fact, there's a spinning hook kick. In fact, over time, the more we start to believe that there are certain things you can and cannot do, the different things work even better. People with, with Chinese martial arts backgrounds actually start to do things that that fighters that are, you know, sort of have come up in the structured MMA ways. There's a turning sidekick. No holding. They uh, doing different. Different is hard when when in fighting. Nice take down by DeFranco. Takes his back. DeFranco just sort of filling in the space between the two, fitting in like a puzzle piece. And I guess this is the danger of throwing quite so many kicks that you leave yourself open to uh, a leg being grabbed and ending up on the bottom. Especially after a miss, there's there's a small window of opportunity for your opponent. He times really well. You can get, get a hold of your wrist right here, just like we saw earlier. Yep. Good job defending that. So you defend that, but as a result, you end up losing the post, and the, which is the hand that's on the ground there. He goes back, goes back to the to elbow it. post, and DeFranco goes back to lacing it and riding it. So good stuff from DeFranco. Yeah, you, you can choose. You can either give him the wrist right, as you said, or you can go to your back, but then you're stuck between your opponent and the fence. So both are Man. not necessarily a fun place to be. Yeah, you got to pick your poison, and then you know he'll uh, he'll uh, he'll take what's there. There, good, good elbows. Stuff. Yeah. The catcher did a good job there of getting back into full guard, but uh, as you both pointed out, he ate some big Try elbows in that transition. Yeah. Tried the, uh, an orthodox submission over there. Yeah, it's teepee. A teepee lock, right? Yeah. Yeah, it'll make him uncomfortable, but he's going to try for an armbar or a triangle here. His feet are open, right? So there are their closed. When we see a closed guard, you're a lot of steps away from go standing back up. Yep, especially against the fence. Yeah, many steps, because first your feet would have to go to the hips, then to the ground, right? So now you're just staying here. In the old days, olden days, we might try submissions or a sweep, but today you get, it, you get pieced up here for like that. Yeah, 100%. You want to open the legs and you want to like, give him your back. That's pretty much the only way up. Give him your back, you push, push the wrist down, make sure he doesn't drag you back to the, to the floor. But keeping your guard closed against the fence, you're just keeping yourself over there and he's going to help you. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Now he's going to roll and there. Uh, he gave up side control yeah. in, that, uh, in that little attempt to move. DeFranco fits in real nice. Uh, that term fitting in. Um, uh, the a uh, AKA people kind of talk about that idea where you sort of fill in all the gaps like a puzzle piece. John Fitch talked to me a lot about that. That idea that you just fill in all the space and DeFranco's doing that now. He's kind of Oh, oh very yeah. nice. Can he he's roll the use over the fence? No, oh, no. beautiful. Yeah, good Great part. defense by Gotcha. And a reversal, but so, we're seeing DeFranco try and. Uh, so Gotcha, they call it. 
an underhook equivalent when you when you lock the underhook like that with your own hand and you go hip heavy and then you free the right elbow. Uh, gotcha's having a good minute here, that's for sure. It's a really nice minute for him. Watch out your back. Watch out Trying to get this round back because he knows he's, he's he's behind on the scorecards here. DeFranco is playing something. Up a yeah. Yeah. Yep. DeFranco's playing something they call like deep half guard. It's not a safe place in MMA unless you're a master of it. Yep. And uh, no, 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 10 nope, seconds. Ten seconds. <laughs> nope. Yeah. That might be one of the only times I've uh, seen a fighter make an incorrect guess at the time. Back on your back, buddy. Yeah, he was like, hey, good round. And they're like, no, 10 seconds. Back on okay. elbows. A, here's another one for you. Oh, sorry. I got to elbow you some more. Really good round for both guys. Both guys had good, good moments. And I wonder whether the doctor is going to come in here and have a look at the cut on DeFranco because as soon as he stood up, it looked like he started to gush a little bit of blood. He's complaining about the back there, which is actually, if it's behind the ear, it's not illegal. So he caught the turning sidekick, but really didn't matter how he caught it because he was committed to getting his hips all the way in. And this is a beautiful little transition yeah. from that. He had a good, good first three and a half minutes. Depending yeah. on judges, a lot of times, if, you, if their memory is good, you give him the round. Yeah, 100%. Oh. And he was the anaconda choke. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to turn Gatcher and sink that in. Yeah. A, a quick note as well, the referees had a look at the cut. It's all fine, so the second round is going okay, right ahead. It seemed like he, he felt like he didn't have it locked in all the way, and he gave it up, because yeah. Gaksha wasn't getting his arm out. Yeah, it was, you're right. It, it, he, he sort of aborted the, the attempt. There was something he... Okay. Maybe Second in his one. own twist, he didn't like his own position or something. He didn't want to burn his arms out, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and Gacha was stable, so he rolled and Gacha did not. And so I think that was it. That's, that's, that's a good defense. Post on your elbows like that and have a white base, it's really hard to roll you over. Nice kick by yeah. Gacha. Sort of side kicks and hook kicks, a lot of, a lot of action. Front, that front leg of the Taekwondo artist is a lot more dangerous than most martial artists. A little bit of back and forth kicking here. You'd love to see it. It's going to be hard to to land around. Not not impossible. It <laughs> certainly can happen. But harder to land kicks on a guy who spent a lifetime evading kicks with his hands down. And that was a nice and inside leg kick there. I don't. Sometimes you'll see Taekwondo on the internet. And a guy will get kicked in the head, and the audience or the, the comments will be like, why do they keep their hands down? And the answer to that, and the answer to why you do, is there's a hierarchy of defense. And block is lower down than evade. Right. Evading a strike is a much better defense, and you can evade easier when your hands are down. You would have loved to evade this one. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a accidental, but it caught Gatcha Cup, so he's got like a few minutes now. He's got five minutes. You know what, what Robin was saying, I agree, like some people like to block with their hands, but especially Watch like out. when you get a shin to the to the forearm, that can be it. Yeah, it's the end. So yeah. when you have your hands down and you are able to make your opponent miss, it's a lot better for you, yeah. especially if you have a long fight left to go. And somebody might say, well, why don't you do both? But when I raise my hands, I engage my core in such a way that it reduces my mobility. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then people will drop their hands so that they can move better. Okay. It's not an either, it's an either or. If you do both, you give up some mobility to then put the small bones up and hope to protect against the kick. So there's a reason for it is what I'm saying. And you will see comments, why do Taekwondo guys keep their hands down? Well, there's a very good reason. Yeah, all part of the system. Yeah, and nice job. Also part of uh, physics and the way the body works. That's right, oh. biomechanics. Oh. And this has been a fantastic yeah. fight. Really it's cool. going up a little bit. Like seeing that yeah. Superman punch. <laughs> These guys are really throwing some jazzy shit out there. Yeah. Couldn't make up his own. Oh! oh. It, and, and DeFranco was moving away when the spinning heel kick landed. And that's why he's still conscious. Same thing I, happened in the first round, though. Mm -hmm. Spinning kick by Gaksha, and now Fran DeFranco takes him down. Yes. Yeah, and that one landed. But again, if you're moving away from a strike, you're, you're, you're reducing its acceleration. You're sort of uh, dispersing its damage, yep. you know? We're seeing here now DeFranco is trying to take advantage of uh, Gatchu. What's, what's he trying to work on here, Robin? You see he's got that heel, the left heel, or, or ankle, I should say. 
Uh, now you can control the pelvis. It doesn't look fun, but you actually get good control over a guy there. And now Gatcha's trying to commit to this single leg, but he he's foiled on it. Good job by the front girl. Going, to, going to the back after a sprawl. There's that ankle. himself heavy with the hips. Yeah. That ankle again. Rotates around now. He's got the trying right arm the back. Yeah. He doesn't have the angle, though, for the back. No. Now he's getting there. He's getting closer, but Gox is going to turn back, but he's got a wrist right he's again. Got, yeah. Yeah, this is some good stuff from DeFranco. Took it on a week and a half notice. And he didn't come in here thinking, you know, Oh, it's good. Like he knew he came in ready to take a win off a guy with a lot of momentum that a lot of people were talking about. And he's doing a great job so far through a round and a half. Very bad spot for Gaksha over here against the fence in the wrist drive. And, and DeFranco's going for an arm triangle. Yeah. yeah, he looks like he's uh, not too yeah. Ear to tricep here. Yeah, he's got it. He's got something. Now you oh, slide no. up. No. no. Oh, it's, it's hard to finish though. against the cage. Yes. Gotcha reverses up. Nice yeah. sweep. That was timing. That you just Perfect. literally, there's a moment in time where the guy on top of you is weightless, or at least lighter because of his own movement. And, and Gacha found that moment. I love watching some high octane grappling like this when there's just a back and forth. And... Same thing as, a, as a happened in the first round. Yeah. Gacha comes back at the end of the round. He's got a Very little strong. more time this time, yep. a little bit more. He's just happy to wail on those legs from it here. Absolutely, but. those hurt so bad. It's hard to, to explain it on television, but take a bat and hit yourself in the leg. The front guard needs to make sure he gets away from the fence. Good job. Gets the single. Yeah, it comes Beautiful. Out. Yeah, he got the heel. Nice job. Fantastic. Love it. Fantastic. Yeah, he tricked him a little bit into that. Great timing. Yeah. And now with a minute, you know, with under a minute left to go in the round, that that little movement could be the one that swings it from DeFranco. Yeah. He had a good DeFranco had a good first half. If Gotcha had a good second half, we're close. But DeFranco has a good first half and yeah. owns the last half a minute. Be hard for the judges to overlook. Be hard. If he finishes on top, it's um, it's probably two rounds for him in the back. Knee to the body would be really good from here too. You can go knee to the body all day long without giving up the spot if you distribute your weight properly. But he'll, he'll gladly take some hammer fists instead. Yeah, I'm sure DeFranco is happy just to chill out here. As long as he's won the round. And you never know that for sure. We think so, but... Uh, he's not happy yeah. to chill out here. He's still got something in the tank. And, uh, Good job convincing the judges over there. Very strong entity round for DeFranco. And a nice little bit of sportsmanship there, helping Gatcha up. I will mention too, when we saw Gatcha was smoking the, the, the small bones and the small muscles of the lower leg standing over. Watch the spinning pink. Oh, yeah, it's a nice. But he was moving away. And again, but it was uh, like Stefan said, the same thing happened in the second round as the first one. Gatcha threw a spinning attack. He opened up his back and DeFranco took that opportunity and effectively won the round both times with that move. Beautiful timing on that reversal, though, from, yeah, the, from the right bottom. there. Great job, and this was this was maybe even more beautiful. Went to the single, got the heel, yeah. finished the, the reversal, finished really strong on top. Really good job. This guy can fight, man. Yeah. Sebastian DeFranco, a weekish notice, week week and a half notice against a guy with a lot of hype around him, um, and I think he's winning the fight. So what happens when you want to go places and you're always training, you're always in shape, opportunity comes up, you're ready to take it. Okay, final round, fight! And here we go, third and final round, five minutes of this back and forth roller coaster of a lightweight fight. We have Gatcha in the full orange and DeFranco in the gray and orange trunks. It's interesting. You know, for a lot of people, they just won't want to stay at this kicking range with a Taekwondo champion. But DeFranco does it to draw something out and then sort of time the gap, you know, wreck the gap and just crash the gap. And he's been hugely successful in yeah. that so far. Yep. He's winning the fight timing those kicks. Yep. And I remember Chris Weidman was fighting a rock hold or a kicker, and he was like, you know, you gotta, you gotta kick with the kicker. You can't just give up the kicks or panic in that situation. You gotta be offensive at times, and that he's done a great job of that. Yep. He's done a great job of that. One of my favorite examples of that was the um, 
Adesanya uh, against Jan Blakovic fight. Mm -hmm. you know, everyone expected Adesanya would just outbox him, but Blakovic stayed, he worked with it. Ugh. Oh, just, oh God, again. that sequence was awesome. Like, he drew, he got a response, he got he got a gacha to lean into punches, and he went under it. And then gacha spinning, it just, the same thing, just took away the gap. Great level change into a takedown, went straight into a crucifix as well, but gacha's got his arms back. Yeah, it was the crucifix was just about to point out, yep. because that could have been the end of the fight if he managed to sink that in. But this Franco's is has got more time now. Yeah. See what he's doing, what he's going to do on top. And this is a harder spot for Gacha to get There's up. There's a head and arm, so yep. he, he, it's not there, but it's forced Gacha to collapse back down, and then he squashed the face the other direction. Now north south. The Franco is moving really well. Really nice. Transitioning yeah. really well from from the side to north south to mount. It's just one step ahead in every little positional exchange. You got an answer, and he has an answer to your answer. Yeah, Gatch's managed to switch back into half, half guard yeah. here. But, you know, DeFranco does well inside, well in north-south. He, he hurts him in half guard. Like, he's good in all these spots t today. Good job by Gaksha getting the wrist here from DeFranco. He wants to let his left leg go and then move his hips back into the game. But DeFranco uh, recognized it and defended really well. And Gacha does not want to be flat out like this, right, Robin? You never want him yearning back. Yeah, and, and on a diagonal is the worst, right? We talked about that earlier today. When you're on one hip and on the other shoulder, your whole spine is flat, right? When your spine is flat, the first thing you have to do is unflatten it. As soon as he unflattened it, he took his back. He's right? beautiful. He's a little yeah. high, though. Yeah. Now watch him reset. Let's see if he moves himself back. No, nope, he just slides off to the he's side. He's got the and arm goes around the yeah. neck. And, he's got and the body triangle. Yeah. This is a bad situation to be with two minutes to go. Yeah. There is plenty of time for DeFranco to work here. Yeah. A lot of pressure when someone's on your back like this. Then with the leg up, you always want to put the foot down to the ground. But in this case, against the fans, there's no mm. way for Gaksha to put the foot down to the mat. And just and, and if you get straightened out here, man, that's rough. If you get flattened, He's controlling all your breathing. Yeah. You cannot breathe, and your body is screaming for oxygen at this part in the fight. <sighs> there's there's no way to fill your lungs. And how tough is it with that extra, with that body triangle on, and just every time you take a breath? It's yeah. horrible. And then yeah. you got the cup in the back as well, mm -hmm. which is sucks. no fun at all. No. And now you're being extended in all these different ways. That punch under the arm hurts, too, in ways that are hard to explain. Especially That's, when you're stretched out, yeah. Now, right? Now he's going to... That forces you to go to all fours, but it's all energy burn to get there. And now you want to stand up, but he's going to roll you right back over. You're going to be right in his basket again. So a minute left to work here to see whether DeFranco can get a finish or Gacha can escape. Gacha could possibly roll into him yeah. on with this There's angle going on with the body There's a little triangle. French braid of flesh and bone down at the bottom that might stop that, right? Yeah, the little hook, the little yep. hook of the foot. Yeah, you have to get rid of that with your, with your own foot and then <laughs> roll into him. Yeah. He's trying. He's trying. Could work, especially yeah. with both guys being so slippery. Yeah. He's working for He's it. Trying. But the, the Franco's doing really well, controlling the wrist. Yeah, look at the left that. foot. He's got something yeah. sunk in here. Yeah. Well, so you're busy see. messing around with his lower body. He's attacking your neck, right? It's so much going on. It's hard to see whether Gatcha just has it. Oh, no. He had enough there. Just a little hand in the arms there of DeFranco to stop look the rear neck from sinking in. He's just free of the foot now. But he's going to come right up on his back. Ugh. It's like a backpack of death. And with that, it, it must be the fight with DeFranco there. But what a contest with Stefan. Yeah, great back and forward. Love the, 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 the transition from DeFranco. Beautiful timing on the takedowns. Well, great back and forth fight, but definitely the DeFranco was the dominant, the yeah. dominant fighter. Good fighter, man. Like, you know. He's got a mellow look on his face. He's super analytical. He just goes in there and stays pretty cool and just performs. We can have notice taking it in, in, you know, in another country, no problem. I'll take fight number 12 and try to get win number 10 in Amsterdam on, you know, Sunday, February 5th. Let's go, you know? And as you were saying, Robin, the fact that DeFranco was able to stand there on the feet and engage in a kicking battle with a Taekwondo expert says breathes about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's calm, right? Like, you know, 
Of course, it's spooky when guys are doing turning kicks that knock people unconscious on the internet. But you got to commit to your thing, and that's what he does here. He, he knows he needs to burn the gap and get on top, and he did it in each round, and sometimes multiple times. It's very scary when you know your opponent's got kicks like that. Yeah. you got to time those, yeah. but he once it. you've done it one time, you get confident. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Watch oh, this one. He almost connected there, though. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. It's, it's a game of, of, of inches, not even inches. Yeah. Millimeters. Yep. Beautiful. Great fight when yeah. you look back at Great it. Great back eh? and forth. Oh, just highlights the this groundwork, is, especially was just yeah. a We're phenomenal experience to watch. Green, please. And we're just going to go effectively to the fight announcement now. Once the highlights are finished, of course, we can see the very end here where DeFranco rode Gatcha like a backpack. And very nearly finished it with that rear naked chunk then. Great first of all, ladies and gentlemen, have a big and big and big applause for these two fighters, Sebastian and DeFranco and Manuel Gatcha. Well, after three rounds of five minutes, we've counted the points and we have a winner. Well, the winner, ladies and gentlemen, is the man in the Blue corner, Sebastian Di Franco. Deserved winner, a fantastic performance, and we're going to go hear from him about it. I'm here with Sebastian Di Franco and the coach. Sebastian, you took this fight on, what, 10 days notice? I took this fight 10, 10 days ago, yeah. Yeah, but he stepped in, took this fight against a top, top, dangerous guy 10 days ago. And you were willing to stand with him, the great kicker, and deal with him and take him down. You gotta be so happy about this fight. Ces jeux de jambes, je les ai esquivés. Je suis pas rentré dans son jeu. Quand je sais pas amener au sol, je l'ai au sol. He told like uh, he wait like uh, Manuel gonna try to bring me bring me down to do a takedown or something. But when I saw he wanna kick, I kick with him and after I bring him down. Yeah, yeah it was beautifully done. Uh, that, in my opinion, that's the best performance of the night so far. Congratulations on a great fight. <laughs> D'abord, merci au LFL de, de m'avoir appelé dix jours avant pour combattre. C'est un honneur pour moi de combattre ici avec Maxime, mes amis qui sont, qui sont venus depuis la Belgique. Et c'est un honneur pour moi de venir ici et de combattre au LFL. First of all, I wanted to thank uh, LFL organization to invite me 10, 10 days ago. And I accept, of course. And I thank all, all my friends and uh, the people who are coming to watching me here live. Well, I'm sure we'll see you again at LFL. Congratulations. Thank you for a wonderful fight. Sebastian DeFranco, ladies and gentlemen.